Sweat Equity Podcast and streaming show, Pragmatic Entrepreneurial Vice with Dig Jokes. I'm your host, Law Smith, sitting to my right, left on your boob tube is Eric Reginger. I'm a little guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, Facebook, or anywhere where videos are sold, Eric looks really little. I look really big because we like a little silly humor now and again. It's because you're a dick and you need to just lower the seat down. Like I asked you, mine doesn't go up as high, and then even if mine's at the top, it's weight. Just lower your seat you got down. Got that? You finished that? Uh, someone's been drinking, but who's drunk on some good information when you can listen to us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Laughable app if you want to. Hit that cheat code that helps us move up the business rankings. We think it'd be funny if we were one of the top business podcasts out there. Uh, subscribe, rate, and review. Just write one little sentence blurb, and that's all we ask of you. Uh, that's the cheat code to get us up. This episode is brought to you by Warby Parker. WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat. Gets five free pairs for you to try on at home. I'm wearing my Warby Parker prescription glasses that i've had for over five years warby parker trial.com forward slash sweat it it throws a little shackles back to this podcast it gets you five free pairs to try them at home and don't get give me money look don't go to lens crafters and get ripped off for 300 to 800 dollars seriously they're they're all about the 95 dollar pair of glasses money me. you're paying just the same don't buy Ray-Bans ever for that purpose. Yeah. They're a disruptor. They've been in the game Should about 10 years. on Ray-Bans. Right. They saw, they saw a problem in the in the eyeglass, sunglass what? industry and knew it didn't need to be that way. Warby Parker, trial.com forward slash sweat. Five free pairs to try on at home. Have your family or coworkers laugh at you about how you don't look good in most glasses. And plus, Warby Parker has... Now, brick-and-mortar setups in most major cities. If you're listening to this in a metropolis, you can go do it old-school style that way if you want. The other the other uh, sponsors of the show, ExpressVPN, try Express what? VPN at uh, try Express, ExpressVPN.com forward slash sweat. Roan Fitnesswear, try Roan.com forward slash sweat. Uh, get you 20% off. Uh, grasshopper try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat gets you $75 off your annual business phone line and freshbooks go freshbooks.com forward slash sweat gets you a 30 day free trial for your accounting software let's get this party started with patrick keen stand-up comedian i'm a good friend of mine for 15 15 years doing stand-up wow howdy toddy what about my sweat equity sweat equity my sweat equity. My, my, my sweat equity. Breathe in. Yeah. Sweat equity. What about my sweat equity? Yeah. Thanks for uh, coming on, Mr. Patrick Keene. Do you want to? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Well, at the top, you want to give everybody your plugs because I'll forget to do it once we start getting into it. Okay. <laughs> Like uh, any social, any website? Anything? Yeah, you want me to say that right now? Sure, yeah. Okay, uh, thanks. I was hoping you guys would have your shirts off. I saw some clips without shirts. I oh, no, you did research. <laughs> oh, oh. But nice way to get, you know what? That's commitment right out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, keen of comedy, <laughs> what I'm going by on all these things, you know, social media, Instagram, Twitter, all this. Keen, K-E-A-N-E, keen of comedy, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all that. And not yeah. spelled like Robert Earl Keane, right? That's right. That's, That's right. different Keane altogether. Well, you don't know Robert Earl Keane? I'm assuming he's a, a murderer of some kind. Well, no. Uh, he murders the country music scene. Um, uh, well, the three names is what got me. If you, oh, yeah, it's different. Yeah, he's K-E-E-N. I'm K-E-A-N-E. Right, right, right. Different uh, murderer. Got it. Like the, ah. uh, so what's, what's been going on? We were going back and forth. Are you... Are you hitting the road at all? Are you doing drive through Yeah, I've Are been you... uh, I've been working with Steve Byrne a little bit. We were in Kansas City. We were in uh, Vegas, and we were in one more market. I forgot uh, I forgot the other market, but uh, yeah, a few places. You know, social distance shows. Rooms are about a third of the way full. Uh, some clubs are for it. You know, um, some are against. Obviously, oh, we were in Arizona as well. And, uh, you know, it's a little tricky, but, but I got to say the audiences are appreciative. Even if they're not laughing, they're just happy to be doing something else. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it sounds tough. 
Sounds yeah. tough. What's a third full man? That's like yeah. just visually looking out and seeing that is like, oh man, crowd well, sucks totally. tonight. I find myself being a lot. Uh, the the less I get on stage, and it's been a while over here uh, because there's just not a lot of mics. Um, you, I mean, in Tampa, you don't really think about it for stand-up wise, but you can get up every night if you want. Um, the thing is, like, lately I haven't done it because I got COVID, and I find myself being needier in conversation or yeah. uh, via email trying to write jokes in there. I don't know if you if yeah. All got... of a sudden, this is something that's happened. <laughs> all of a sudden. Just... Since, you know, COVID. Yeah, yeah. Since I got the COVID cooties. And so... Uh, You're writing more, you say? Uh, no, like writing more, it, like, I think I'm more conversational oh, on stage yeah. kind of stuff. But I find myself in uh, non-comedy situations, like trying to inject jokes where they don't belong just because I don't, I'm not getting that, yeah. that, that feedback anywhere, you know? Yeah. Are you, yeah. Are you finding something similar by not hitting the road? Because you're what? You're probably getting on the road normally 30, 40 weekends a year. Yeah, or about like 30, that. about 30 weeks a year. And then uh, I, what I did was, like every other you know human in this country, I started a podcast when the pandemic started. So I'm like 20 episodes in now. And it's like, it's just half hour episodes. And it's me just, it's more of a diary. I can't imagine anyone ever listening to it. But <laughs> what it's helped with is conversation. I have a similar show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Then, but but yeah, I find the same. I mean, it helps with conversation and flow, and it's less jokey, and just um, you know more fluid and 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 organic and honest. Which I've never been on stage. I've always been just a joke writer. Well, just but, for you uh, personally, I'm sure that makes you feel way better to get to just do that side of it and just be like, it doesn't have to be yeah. so jokey all the time. You can just oh, have diary 100%. style. Yeah, yeah, I remember like when, when we met doing um, Hermosa Beach. I want to say uh, whatever that place was that was like a stilt bar down some one of the beach towns that used to have. Oh, a, the Comedy Magic Club. No, I was I wasn't good enough to get in there. Um, the castle. It was like a Irish restaurant that was huge, and that was oh. hit or miss. Like it would be awesome yeah. sometimes, it would be terrible other weeks. Is that like a Kill Kenny's or something yes. like that? Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Reddington yeah, Beach, Redondo. Man. Redondo, yeah. Redondo. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I'm mixing my Florida and California beaches. Yeah, that but, was like, wait, what? Um, but yeah, that I remember we met. I remember meeting you through that, and you're such a good joke writer, but so over it. This is probably 08, 09. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and literally would just tell jokes, but like turn off the light. There'd be like a, a fan, a ceiling fan light kind of bar show. You well, just turn just it off. Just a thermostat before you go yeah. on stage. Just I'm, casually I'm telling jokes now. that were like dimes and just like just turning shit off oh, and yeah. just like talking to the wall. And just like, Pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's going to go bad, I want it to go really bad. Like, I, I yeah. at least want people to go, what is going on up there? Because, like, you know, LA, it's so fragmented and you don't, it's not like New York in terms of shows where you have people's interest. Uh, attention you know not that not that every show in new york has that but la it's like so many high uh, ambush shows that we do on the audiences and it's they're like what and it's like oh another audience that doesn't even want to be here uh yeah 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 when when the lakers game was on and they're <laughs> like people and it's at a sports bar and people don't know comedy's happening and yeah. you're like i feel like this is assault a little uh, bit on some people I, ambush shows i haven't heard that but it's perfect yeah <laughs> just hey we want to watch the game can you turn that mic off? Like, can he? Just oh yeah, and the Lakers outside? back then were in the playoffs every year. The Lakers were yeah. champion runner-ups all the time. Yeah, it's it, it. Football, not too much, but yeah, basketball. Uh, when the Lakers were on, it was like, shut the fuck up, and you're like, I thought I you guys Laker would know. Jokes. <laughs> I do jokes about Kobe, and you're like, the venue oh, doesn't no. tell anybody what's going yeah. on. They don't care. No one cares. So it's just like. It would get 40 heads in there. The uh, sports bar would be like, whatever you want to do. Do whatever you want to yeah. do. <laughs> They're not going <laughs> to yeah. listen anyway. They're right, gonna... right. Uh, and I don't know. It was one of those things where I was listening to someone's podcast last night or today that was like just listening to all the people that are, are starting to leave L.A. Uh, are you finding yourself wanting to make an exodus out of there? Yeah, you know, I, I was thinking about it towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year about uh... – Going to New York, you know, um, normally you want to do that earlier in the career, but, uh, you know, I don't have anything tying me down and I love that city. And, uh, that's where you can really excel at stand up. 
And uh, then this pandemic hit. So I'm like, I'm not in such a hurry to go to, uh, you know, like, because I'd probably do a Queens or a Brooklyn situation. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, L.A., like, for, for, for example, right now I'm in uh, Jackson Hole visiting my sister's family. Um, Jackson. Uh, and it's funny because it's like Wyoming. Tampa. Yeah, it's it's like it's Jackson Hole, but everyone here calls it Jackson. Oh. And uh, Did you, you know, know with everybody... Wyoming, you're acting like you. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. You did. Yeah. I've I've been I've know. driven through there on tour. Oh, it's beautiful now. Beautiful. We did town, Cheyenne. You know. We performed in Cheyenne oh, and then drove through. One. Oh, yeah. Good job. You really yeah, bombed ass geographer. there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've done a gig in Wyoming. Nice yeah. Cheyenne. Yeah, that's the capital, I think, isn't it? I believe uh, so. But uh, with Casper, no. Uh, but it's just like it's just like Tampa. What nobody calls it Tampa Bay that lives there, do they? Oh, that was all for the football team. Well, yeah, the Tampa Bay is a marketing name, so it yeah. it really encompasses the whole area. It's like saying the Bay Area for San Francisco, although yeah. so that in, includes Oakland and all the, you know, all the encompassing cities that touch the Bay Area over there. But like yeah. Tampa, ha- the city is Tampa. Like if you look at a driver's license, it says Tampa. So. Tampa. You can tell people that have never really, when they're talking about it on TV or something, and they're saying, and we're like, always on the lookout, too. They're saying, what, you live, you, in, are. you live in Tampa so Bay, phony. you know, your ears perk up, and you're like, okay, well, that per- that writer in that sitcom never really. I'm from Tampa Bay, Florida. Never really yeah. got it. Right, right, right. Yeah. I want to say Crashing, they did that. Uh that first season because the guys oh uh, they called it Tampa Bay I want to say Am- I want to say the first the guy that's uh the guy that is like the, the I dude think, that's, uh, I don't I, think- I want to say it's one of those big shows recently that I can't remember which one though yeah he de- in crashing they definitely were going to move to Tampa but I don't think they right Tampa Bay. oh maybe maybe it's not that mm-hmm. uh anyway it's one of those things uh I know you're you're very detailed kind of oriented guy and I think that would bother you if you were like us from here where you just hear yeah. it and you go, Oh fuck, that's not right. But yeah, yeah we I was wondering what this background was behind you. Oh, it's my nephew, my nine year old nephew's bunk beds. So <laughs> we should have probably oh, led a, with there's that. Two of those. <laughs> Good. I was like, things are yeah. really bad, there's dude. You're, beds, you're in a hostel or something. Yeah. I had the guest room, but uh, my mom's in the guest room. And then uh, I got, uh, I guess, you know, cast, cast down into the uh, nephew's room. This is when you yeah. do call it the Jackson Hole. Yeah, yeah this not is, getting this out. Is the so this what, is the, uh, what, what they call it in uh, Shawshank. Solitary or something. Or an all, all put you in the hole, I thought. The Jackson put me in the hole, yeah. But uh, no, I mean, I'm it's saying. good to get out of L.A. Uh, always. But, but July and August in L.A., it's just so hot and the fires and, and, you know, air conditioning is expensive, you know, and nobody's got it. None of the you fires know, like i don't even people. think of that as a concern anywhere but i forgot about i know that. like they're chasing you around and stuff but they kind of are it's legit i mean it, when the when the california start, or la county started running out of water and california started running out of water that was kind of like oh boy wait what that they actually that they, happens la is in a desert people forget that part it's like yeah it's not it's oh, not yeah, they're tropical. pumping water in from Nevada or something crazy. Not Nevada. The know. Colorado River. Somewhere crazy. Like it's like, oh, that they could, that could shut down. Yeah. And, and so yeah. and so yeah. I've had it since I've left LA ten years ago, I've had a running email with my buddies over there that are still there or from there. That's just like Florida's crazy on the outside. Uh, California is crazy on the inside. It's like a mental. That's well said. Yeah, that's well said. We, we yeah, got all, our, sh- all our shits out there in public. And you guys are crazy on your emails with that back and forth. That it's it's called the crazy debate so email, edge. and it's like a thousand emails long. One of those ones that's just forever. Yeah, but though, but it's nine to one. It's me versus and our mutual friend Brendan T. Gleason. He's now taking the L.A. side of everything. Oh yes, okay. So so. Uh, so now it's just nine it's to like one. I'm like, dude, you fucking traitor, bitch. Just... <laughs> but but right. they'll well, be like, yeah, it's it's L.A. is not capable of handling the amount of people that are there. Like, there's just no way. I mean, it's you know, it's it's an apocalyptic state. Well, uh, if you if you look at it's the second biggest land land like uh, city or county mass like uh, Duval County for Jacksonville's number air, one area. Yeah, uh, and then L.A. is number two. It goes from like. Something like Malibu, all the way to like Riverside, or something oh, crazy. God. And, yeah. and River, California, Riverside, the city, like that area, just has like fifteen million people, ten million people, or something like that. Yeah. Like just an absurd amount that you don't even. That's not even the LA you could think about. That's where Breaking Bad was supposed to be. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> and like, they didn't do it because of taxes, so they went to New Mexico. Even like 
Tampa Bay, like most of those cities, are bigger than even Clearwater, Tampa. Right, right, right. Mix, It's like our, we don't even know. Three point two million in the demog- in the whole metro area. Right. Yeah, but it's it's like L.A. is like twenty five, twenty maybe thirty in that whole yeah. like just area Ugh. of what people consider L.A. I mean, yeah, it gets hot. July, August, everyone cranks the air conditioner, and of course, the you know, if you your, have your, one, your neighborhood, your neighborhood shuts down. Electricity goes. Has the grid it? Is bad. Have you yeah. seen more crazy shit going on the last couple of months over there? Um, you know, I've been I've been staying at my uh, mom's in Arizona a little bit just to get out, um, which is really hot. You know, that's one fifteen, but air conditioning is a lot cheaper. That city is w- very capable of handling heat they've been dealing with it forever yeah um, it's like florida yeah LA every, is every just, place uh, is like super cold ac so it's not like yeah it, or else from, nobody's coming or wanting to stay from the building to the cars yeah. like really where it sucks if you yes. want it to yeah yeah i mean it's it's you know there's no comedy shows there's no music venues there's no uh, shows in production so like i don't know if you don't have passive residual income or if you don't have a podcast or that makes money. I don't know how so many Los Angelinos are making money. I don't, I don't, it's like really mm-hmm. frustrating. I like that. Well, I've been kind of obsessed with the idea of everybody having to pivot, kind of improvise what they're doing with their career. What, how have you kept sane in all of this? You know, um, because the anxiety, yeah. a lot of comics I talk to or performers in general are just like, I don't know if I, a lot of them are like, I don't know if we're going to be able to perform until 2022. So, you know, like, a lot of them are preparing like that. Um, and a lot of them are finding like, you know, the po- a podcast as an avenue, but it, it's not the same. It's not the same. And it, 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 it does help. I would say it does feed a little bit of that kind of comedy stuff. Sometimes I'll write for our show uh, occasionally. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That'll fall. Really? It falls, it falls dead because Eric's not oh. a yes ander. But uh, oh, <laughs> and then you reverse it back on me. Yeah, okay. yeah. See, I, I did it. that real passive aggressive. But uh, and how else am I bad? <laughs> yes, and how else do I suck? Well, Is you're you not wearing a me? shirt, and it's it's that it's I guess me a and did oh, never yes, and did the shirt. Exactly. Yeah, I know, I know. thank you, uh, thank you, Patrick. But you uh, raised the stakes. It was great. I find that even even just anybody in the kind of white collar professions, not so much my blue collar friends, they're they're still chugging along, and I feel like that they're they're not the ones that are getting getting covid a lot uh as much as people indoors huffing and puffing the same air kind of thing what what have you done anything in your routine to keep you you know sane have you switched yeah it the, up? um i was doing a lot of reading i was doing a lot of hagen dazs but uh now it's like this company i started about five or six years ago called uh, guest of honor was it's a corporate show where we we myself and a partner go to uh, corporate events and we create a um, kind of a talk show setting around their corporate event, right? So like nice, that's cool. If it's a retirement party, yeah. If it's a retirement party or a uh, you know uh, like service industry night or a holiday party, we go. We have the backdrop that looks like the late night. You know, it's got the skyline in New York. We set that up. I set up a little portable desk. Oh, my that's buddy awesome. Dan Satchoff plays the keyboard, really small keyboard. And, um, and we bring the guest on and we make the company the guest, right? Like that's smart. The whole monologue is about them. The whole top 10 list is about them, you know, parking and personnel and the, the lunchroom and, and just bring on the guests and we do an hour show. And so now we're trying to take that online for these corporate galas, uh, zoom, zoom, zoom galas, I guess. Oh, called. That's a tough so. step back, but I love what yeah. you were doing before. It, it reminds me because. I was getting into some, like red carpet events where it's like, you know, it it actually took a big shit on my chest, but we didn't <laughs> fall through. But we, uh, you know, Laura you don't like have, that. To be clear, you're not like John McAfee. You don't like the shit on your chest. It, th- yes, yeah. not, it, not out of nowhere. No, you know, <laughs> but like it was like an alternative thing where it's like a marketing gimmick. Really, you know, that's not not everybody can do what you're doing in terms of like we turn it into a late night show no the right. com- the common complaint so for those that don't know uh corporate comedy gigs are notoriously awesome and like you get paid a lot to do them but they always want you to talk about someone specific like the boss and it's really tough because they don't give you a lot and you can't you have to be very clean 
Yeah. This way, this is a very smart way to position it because you're kind of yeah. you're you're hitting those needs they want in that, but also not you're setting it up so it's not like straight stand up, right? right? So you can you can ping and pong, and most people are terrible uh, right. on stage, so you can kind of improvise with them too. I'm sure. That. Right, we get all yeah, we get all the intel beforehand, and we give them as much as possible, so that they're comfortable. Because yeah, I mean, the last thing we want is them trying to be too funny. Oh, and it's like yeah. just be real, you know, just be genuine. We'll take care of the rest. Yeah, and, stay in the uh, pocket. Stay in the pocket, you yeah. know. And, and you're, you're right about those corporate gigs when they're like, "Oh, can you talk about this and that and this?" And it's like, "How about how about we just make the entire show about you know the boss or whatever whatever situation you're celebrating." No, Let's that's just make the whole show about that's that. brilliant. No, right. I love that. It's like you're kind of putting it on them. You're able to interview somebody. You're not going to be throwing jokes out there that might be like, oh shit, like I don't know, but yeah, or they're written by some jackass who actually works there. You yeah, know, that's like fed yeah. to you. It's like, oh god. But I'll tell you, man, you could still. There's a definitely a good market for doing that on these Zoom calls. So I, I've been trying to help one group I'm associated with. I've been trying to help them with their ceremony that they do every year and it's just like i was like you guys can cut this cut this cut this let's make it very tight and just let's break up all the segments that we can use later for content and really just focus on that for this year uh but the one thing that i have like one person there who's all about the extended like pageantry and it's Right, I'm not just, okay I, that you're cutting their musical numbers, sort of stuff. It's kind of like you have to pay homage to this person, this person, this person, yeah. these people that get an award. This per- like, and it's like cool. You, they have a certain amount of time. Let's 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 put it like let's act like an executive producer on it, kind of thing. Um, but my thing is like, they I attended a bunch of these just to kind of get some research, and whoa boy, they need some kind of uh, framing device like that, like you're doing. They need some kind of uh, host because it's yeah. usually someone that works at the company or someone that works for the group or association and that's like, okay, now we're going to um, get to the – John, yeah. are you there, John? Uh, you know, like <laughs> yeah. just know like – and I had to tell him like, hey, when you introduce someone, make sure you, you say their name last. Like here's that's an easy tip that yeah. I've learned from stand-up because the worst is when you bring someone up on stage and you go – uh, John is the CEO of blah blah, and then he enjoys bike riding. And all, and like, you just bring this name up last, and they're like, "Here oh, he is." I never yeah, would have thought of lose, that. You lose the moment. Yeah, yeah, you lose that moment. Yeah. And then if you're on, if there was in real life, they'd be on stage like, "Should I walk up?" Do I? Is, or they'd <laughs> so, already be like next to you while you're still doing it. So. Yeah. Well, the interactive thing is like that's great. Like the back and forth where it's kind of you know it's not so scripted and. That opens it up to a little bit of uh, relaxation, I think, for people. Where it's like doing a stand-up five-minute or whatever. I mean, geez, you're probably having to do 20, 40. Like, that's tough. How much writing are you having to do, like, customized writing? I'm sure you got stock jokes at this yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you got stock stuff. And then, you uh, you know, you try to tie in any topical stuff that's clean. And then, um, you know, you get the intel on people. Usually there's something about the break room or there's something about who's late for work or, you know, who, who drinks the most. And, you know, it's kind of light roasty. Um, and, uh, but you know, generally it works. It's only one time was, was it rough? And it was cause we started at nine o'clock on a Friday night, Oh God, which is just a, such a mistake. I it's mean, it's a Friday just, late show, man. <laughs> yeah, it was, it yeah. was. And it was with a bunch of scientists in San Diego and they were just like over it. And I was just it's like, why didn't we have for a scientist, work? man? Oh yeah, yeah. They gotta yeah. get up and do equations tomorrow and shit. Thanks, science. It's Friday, yeah, the, but um, <laughs> they gotta get up and do equations. Can't play with their beakers. <laughs> yeah. Measurements. Put on goggles. Absolutely, man. has to be precise. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Math. But, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, it's fun. It's a, it's a good payday. It's it's very it's, it's you go in thinking it's G rated and they they're like oh yeah no it's PG thirteen but really they want it G yeah uh, <laughs> you know they can't you can't get too edgy with this. Yeah, but, man. Uh, I, you know, I didn't know you were doing that. I'll if if it comes up, I'll try to I'll try to uh, push you to anybody that might need that service. Even even yeah, because sometimes we don't even need to be there. We'll coach people through it. You know, where they can be the host, and we're like, stick to the script. You know, with these jokes, and you should be fine. And then we give them crutches. Like if the joke fails, 
here's a few lines here's some savers you know here's some right. saves oh, that's nice and then you can always be like hey the writer we got a writer strike you can always you go to those saves have those have you? Um, I, I feel like I've done this for a lot of wedding speeches the last I don't know twelve, fifteen years. Where someone's like, "Man, I'm real nervous. Can you? Can I walk this through with you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, fine." And then they'll pull out like an, an absurd amount of pages, and I'm like, first of all, if yeah. I could throw that away, yeah, throw the last." And I'm like, "Anything after number two? Anything longer than three minutes? You're really pushing it. And three minutes yeah. is fucking long for yeah. a toast. You better be crushing at that point. So yeah. you need some like." I call it the jet ski key pull out. Just you need to be able to rip it out and just like, if this doesn't work here, you're done. And just this is where you give a toast. So you can always cut out whenever you're you're dead and just go ah, and and bail yourself out by giving yeah. a toast. But less uh, is more. Less yeah. is more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get get to the point quickly. And then when I've had to coach up <laughs> girls doing it, you know the maid of honor stuff. They're they go way too mean or way too sensitive, and it's like or way too inside. Yeah, and I'm like, no one knows who you Catherine know, is. Remember? <laughs> yeah, remember yeah. That? <laughs> They're like, I don't the even no remember. Don't yeah, I don't know who that is. The bride and I'm, doesn't I'm, remember. I know a lot of people here. Like, the, yeah, it's not gonna work. Yeah. Uh, uh, remember? Or, or they do the thing where they trade off every sentence, uh, but oh, it, it's not like one's a normal yeah. and. One's one's the evil, one's the that can work if that you got yeah, the angel can. and demon side, <laughs> but it has to be funny. Like they'll just trade dude. off sentences. I dude, Th- that has no punch. Dude, so I've worked, I've filmed, I don't know, a hundred weddings, like as like a side gig, never, ever worked in that fact. That's never worked. Yeah, I've seen it, but it's never worked. Do, I've seen. Do you guys get? Uh, do you guys get that? Well, no, I'll just make it up up there. I'll speak from the heart once I get up there. And it's like that's not, it's not going to go well. I, I, yeah, right. I just go, how many times have you done that? And it's gone yeah. well. And they're like, zero. And I'm like, oh. so yeah. you think you got this Make now? It quick then. Right. Yeah. Don't be afraid to get out of there. That'd be a yeah. good, that'd be a good, sir. That's a good like service y'all could promote too, is being not for weddings so much because no one will, I, I think people have too much ego to really pay for that. But, yeah. uh, but, you know, but it can never be too short. Like, don't, don't think exactly. a minute. I mean, the Gettysburg address was what, a minute and a half? Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, we we knew that. I know. I listen to it every morning. Yeah. Um, I love the Gettysburg address. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> my favorite address. The you know, captain, my oh, captain. Man, you guys are on top of that. You're on top of Wyoming <laughs> cities. You got it, man. All of it. We know it all. <laughs> well, uh, I feel like you're really yeah. jealous of what Patrick came up with, with the corporate gig. He, he, no, yes. no, that's tough in, work. That's tough work. Here's why. Here's why I'm I know not, incompetent. It's not. No, it's not my. I it, that wanna, isn't well, my we'll lane. You, he's a, well, he's, a he's a great joke writer. I, it's hard for me to sit down and like cram out a bunch of jokes. Like, I know you have to do research. So you're jealous of that? I yeah, I'm jealous of that skill for sure. Because that takes that takes a lot of discipline to go to sit down and write and just. I don't know. Do you have a quota every day you try to do? Yeah, I mean, yeah, usually you want that. Like when they say, hey, can we see an outline in two weeks? I'll probably work on it that night. I'll have a rough God. by that night because so, I just don't want to be unprepared. You know? So I, I just, would procrastinate. I would rather, like, I, I get to... See, I would procrastinate, not I, like you. Not no, the... <laughs> no, I would take – no, I would go, okay, I'll get to it. I think about it for a week before I would actually start doing anything, you know? I thought Patrick was saying he would do it the night before. No, he was saying the night you... of. Like getting the assignment. Oh, yeah, right? That's what you just said. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I thought you were saying, and then I would be the one night, to procrastinate. No, 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 no. Sorry. No, he's yeah, diligent. Yeah. I would, ah. I would, but I, here's, here's the worst part. I would think about it a lot and not do anything, which is something oh, yeah. I'm trying to work on. Um, you sure, know, sure. Instead yeah. of just. But I'll, I'll, I'll outsource jokes too, some, or some of that. Like, I'll, I'll be like, I'll go to a buddy. Hey, can you look at these for, put this on your plate for half a day and I'll give you a certain amount of money just to punch up whatever. And, you know. Because you want some fresh eyes on it, and then uh, also we do finders fees if someone refers a company to us. You know, we'll give them like ten percent or something. Yeah, which is that, helpful. That ain't bad. Uh, yeah. What's it called? If so, you have a creative process. I feel like that's always interesting to ask everybody. I mean, yeah. this show, if it's anything, we really want to have some kind of pragmatic advice somewhere throughout an episode. Yeah. Uh, how did you? Do you know how you found your kind of creative process? Yeah, like I mean, you, you keep you keep pounding, right? You keep swinging away. And I, and I really think show business is even tougher in a lot of ways than Wall Street or politics or tech because I feel like those are more merit-based. 
and, and Hollywood is a mess and, you know, the business model is a mess and, uh, you just keep swinging away. And I was at that time, I was about 15 years in and I was like, this is just such moderate success for like, I'm so much better than this. You know, I, right. I, I have the college degree. I've worked professionally. Um, I I'm friends with a lot of, you know, as you, you and I are both friends with bigger name comics that, that you just can't get on a writing staff for whatever reason, you know, you're not repped by the right people or, you know, for, it's weird to say, but for uh, a white male heterosexual, <laughs> once, you know, once you hit 40, like the diversity thing, and, and it should exist. I'm glad it does, but, but, you know, you pay the price uh, for that. And so it's like, you better start thinking outside the box. And, and um, so, yeah, I just kind of, said you know well look at all these people every friggin entertainer has a late night talk show and uh they're they're all watered down it's all diluted so if, if everyone's gonna have a t- late night talk show then let's have every civilian have one too i mean you know like why not make it karaoke like with these companies yeah, they're writing them that day you know yeah it's, it's not like you know months in advance of work there's very little of that and you have the skill set to do it that's the other thing is like you yeah. go here's a need that other comics don't want to do. Why don't they want to do it? Well, they're not super organized on like right. a production side. It seems like so. It probably the first one was probably a shitload of work. Like, and yeah. it probably seemed almost insurmountable to go like, can we do this again? Kind of thing. But yeah. at the same time, you go okay. I would trim the fat here, here, and here. I'd make this easier by doing this, by getting this info. We can automate some other shit, you know, way ahead of time. We need a, this amount of lead time to write everything. And to pull that creative from the client, I'm sure you yeah. have it kind of processed out by now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You get a feel for what they want. And cause we, we also shape it like we had one company and it was just, uh, uh, you know, it was, uh, we just called it your company tonight. Um, in whatever your company is, you know, right, right. like, you know, Geico or Cisco or whatever. But then we also, some people want to do more sketchy stuff. So we'll call it like, uh, you know, McDonald's night live. Yeah. And we'll shape it more like oh, a know. sketch film, you know? Um, so yeah, it depends on what they want. And, and Dan is good because I'm the comic and a writer and Dan, my partner is a musician, a sketch character, actor, puppeteer. So between oh, the nice. two of us, we can kind of collaborate and he's worked a ton of corporate stuff. And it's just funny to me, like all the sketch writing classes you can take all over the country. And what are there five sketch shows on TV? Maybe three, you know? Right. Um, but there's no commercial writing classes. Like there's commercials every second. Why, you know, and I really admire like Geico and some of these companies that just made it silly and make quick hitting commercials. I'm like, Oh, they need probably two writers and they should tape it themselves. And they've, they've cleaned up. I've been made fun of for, for praising Geico's ads. I think they're, because it's not, you don't, you wouldn't see a lot of comics talking about how good their stuff is. I think their their ads are brilliant if you really take anything into context. It's like they're funny, they're G rated. Well they get you within fifteen seconds, sometimes five. Right. But you also forget that they're not doing just funny like the, the It's uh, not yeah, it's the not Gecko the, is the Gecko's right. not funny. They have right. you could tell they have multiple right, that's marketing free. firms that are putting it out there, but they at least got one that they're taking, you know, swings for the fences with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're interstitials, I would say, or or they crush it. And the Geico stuff is more had... is broad and that's a mascot and that's another creative campaign that they integrate, you know, right. throughout. My grandma loves it. Well, yeah. my my Both my grandmas are dead. My least five, favorite so thing <laughs> I yeah. always wonder who who laughs at a lot of commercials that are out there that are like zero. That's like a zero out of ten, and I I, I remember going to the airport and just seeing like just guys that are watching TV and like laughing out loud at like garbage and you're just like, oh, you really no. think the progressive yeah, lady's funny? Yeah. Like, okay, you know, yeah, yeah. you got to think outside the box. You know, these these like some of these comics that just play New York or just play LA. And when I say just L.A. or New York, I mean just certain parts of L.A. And New York, <laughs> right. right? Oh, yeah. part. And it's like, man, you better get out there and see, you know, see the Alabamas, see the Ohio's, see the, you know, Nevada's. It's just it's a bigger world. And if you're just writing for Comedy Central, that's a really small window. It's a, it's a you know, huge margin of miss. You can't just write for Comedy Central unless I don't know if, if, if you've got a friend or a brother or a relative that's a director there or something yeah. you can do that but, it, it's but something you to really shoot. need to think outside the box it, it's something to shoot for but you you limit yourself as going here's one of three places I want to write for 
and and also that just TV networks in general they switch up presence all the time and switch up strategies and then you could get signed and then get canned for no reason just because they want to just go in a different direction you're like well I, I, I put all my eggs in that yeah. basket well, you, yeah exactly you don't want to because you'll get into like this is my style of comedy it's like don't do that just like yeah you might you might kill it in Mississippi but right. you don't know it you, you know like it's, it's there's one chick that it's was weird. grandma. I'm sure you've seen her, her posters at cl- clubs in the southeast. It's like grandma something, and she fucking crushes. Yeah, like sells yeah. out. Right. You never heard of her. Right. No, no one, no one I know has ever heard of her. And we were we when we were doing a tour like ten years ago, we were following her. You can see like posters, like she or she Snail was coming tail. after us. So we were like, damn, this chick. And we looked it up. She fucking crushes. And you're like. Yeah. No one knows of it. So there's so many segments now, and comedians are secretly very entrepreneurial. They just, they think it's douchey to consider themselves that way, and it's yeah. like, no, I mean it's risk taking. It's you it's are very, a business. It, yeah, you're the business. Kind of no way around. Well, that's right. where that's where that stops because they don't want to think of themselves as a brand because that's where right. you, you feel like you're the man. You're but it's like then. You're, you're doing douche, it anyway. You know. um, but all right, man. Well, you, I mean, do that's, you remember the you remember the movie? Uh, uh, Oh damn it, Donny Brasco! You remember that with Al Pacino and Johnny Depp? Yeah. And and there was a character in that. He's one of my favorite. James Russo plays the Italian. He's in that little gang. He was in Beverly Hills Cop. Um, he was in. Uh, he was his buddy that dies in the beginning of Beverly Hills Cop. Um, but he's Italian, you know, Italian German guy from New we'll York. Put it in but, the show notes. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's uh he's got a great line in Donny Brasco where they're trying to figure out ways to make money. And he just says, man, it's it's 50 wise guys chasing the same nickel. And and that's what it is with comics, where it's like, ooh, I need to get that show or that show. And it's like that sitcom. And it's like, man, you better you better open up a YouTube account. You better start uh, learning TikTok and Instagram, you know, if you right. want to if you want to do this. I mean, it's still all about the writing. It's still that's the core. But you've got to play some of these games. It just goes back to the just keep doing it because. Absolutely. Even though your best stuff might have happened five years ago, the stuff you just put out yesterday might hit the right person, and boom, it's all. It's just so weird. That's like, that's how it works. Sometimes your worst shit might get you found out. Well, the, the last thing I want to ask, because uh, we try to keep these to about thirty-three minutes. Uh, okay. What's it called? Um, what What advice would you give your thirteen-year-old self? We're down 13 to thirteen. Yeah, yeah, thirteen. Dude. I'm I uh, I purposely wanted thirteen to see if anybody wants to you know take a, take an, imma- how young take an, imma- getting these an immature an immature uh, joke. Well, that's at great. It. I think start trying now. Whether it's writing or even if even if it's just writing ideas and not writing stories or jokes, write your ideas down and don't be afraid to look silly. Like don't worry. Like part of Dennis Rodman's greatness was he didn't he would take on he'd take the charge or he'd foul he didn't care about looking silly and so many guys are worried about getting posterized like don't worry about being humiliated because later on it's just going to make you tougher Trump doesn't worry about looking silly I mean whether you like him or not yeah I was going to say I love that yeah and then you know but Trump you're right you love Trump I'm just saying He's right. like our coolest right. president of all it's time. Just, hey, whatever works, <laughs> whatever works. But you but know? that maybe maybe not the greatest example, or just not the most likable. But but don't worry about you know just write and create and event. You, each time you're going to remove a layer of suck, you know. And by the time you're 18 or 23 or 30, you know you're going to be a lot further along. Did you find yourself not doing that early enough? Like yeah, I was worried about failure for a long time. Yeah, until maybe even my 30s, maybe sure. 40. No, yeah. I mean, everybody has a piece of that. You don't really lose that completely. But I'm saying, like, yeah, I had a football coach that, that got, knocked that out of me early on. He's like, you're, I can t- he put me in a game, and I was shitty. It was like when I was ninth grade. He just put me in at a position, like, cornerback, and I didn't even play that. And he was just Burn. like, he told the JV coach, just, I'm going to put you in there. And so I went in, didn't know what I was doing, and he's like, you fucking scared to you're you're scared to fail. You're scared to miss a tackle, which makes you shittier. That's a huge part of high school football. And I was like, oh, and that when that clicked, that helped a lot. You're gonna step up yeah. or not, right? That's and then pretty much high school football in, in a nutshell, right? And and the same can be said in a lot of directions. When you do stand up, you're so scared to fail that you never branch out and you always stick with this material and you never go. You never, you never grow, and it goes beyond creative. It goes into a lot of professional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But all right, man. Well, thanks for coming on, dude. And uh, yeah, thanks, Eric. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, Cheers, man. man.
I really appreciate it. See you around, buddy. All right, buddy. We'll talk. See ya. See you, dude. Oh, bye.